Our planet is home to dozens of unique places that just feel otherworldly. Located in central California at the eastern portal to Yosemite National Park, Mono Lake is one such place that narrowly escaped an almost certain fate during the California water wars of the early 20th century. I can't wait to tell you all about it, so be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications for future updates. Mono Lake is an alkaline lake that formed nearly 760,000 years ago during the Ice Age in an endorheic basin, meaning it doesn't have a natural outflow. While it does have several freshwater tributaries, the lack of an outflow means equilibrium is achieved solely through evaporation, a natural process which contributes to the lake's hypersalinity and high alkalinity. These two qualities are what created one of Mono Lake's most iconic features, the Tufa Towers, large monolithic structures that are formed when calcium entering through underwater springs mixes with carbonates in the lake water in a chemical reaction that creates limestone. In 1872, Mark Twain documented his adventures at Mono Lake in his autobiography titled Roughing It. His humorous account makes his disdain for the area quite evident, at one point describing the lake as a solemn, silent, sailless sea, a lonely tenant of the loneliest spot on earth that is little graced with the picturesque. He even wrote about his fear of capsizing on the lake because in his words, once capsized, death would ensue in spite of the bravest swimming, for that venomous water would eat a man's eyes out like fire and burn him inside out too. After visiting Mono Lake for myself, I'm starting to think that Mark Twain was a bit of a drama queen. The salinity and alkalinity of the lake actually make it perfectly safe, if not healthful, to swim in. Mono's hypersalinity and alkalinity make it impossible for fish to survive in. In fact, the California Department of Fish and Game once tried to stock the lake, but the fish quickly died off. However, the salty conditions make the lake a breeding ground for billions of brine shrimp and alkali flies that are a vital food source to several species of migratory shorebirds. Located within a geologically active area, the U.S. Geological Survey has classified the Mono Lake volcanic field as having a moderate threat potential, which means the area requires basic real-time monitoring coverage and is the second highest priority in California after Mount Lassen and Mount Shasta. Eruptions have occurred at 500-year intervals over the past 3,000 years, with the last one occurring sometime between 1720 and 1850. This recent eruption was responsible for forming Poha Island, one of Mono's two major islands. Mono Lake has survived thousands of years of chaotic natural processes, but perhaps one of the biggest threats to its survival occurred only within the last 100 years, something that has solidified its place in environmental case law. In 1913, William Mulholland was at the pinnacle of his career as the superintendent of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, or LADWP. He had a vision of growing Los Angeles into a major metropolitan area. With relentless determination, he oversaw the creation of the Los Angeles Aqueduct, a massive infrastructure project and important landmark that allowed Los Angeles to grow into the major metropolis it is today. However, if there's a term to describe Mulholland, Honest environmentalist is not one of them. Had the ruthless Irish-American civil engineer gotten his way, a massive dam would have been constructed in the iconic Yosemite Valley. However, he wasn't completely heartless. He conceded that he would have first had the valley carefully photographed so people could remember what was destroyed. Mulholland's master plan for the Los Angeles aqueduct was to essentially steal water from Northern California by diverting the Owens River south to a reservoir in the San Fernando Valley. This dramatically decreased the level of Mono Lake, which relies on tributaries from Owens River. To make matters worse, the LADWP extended the aqueduct system northward in 1941, which led to more water being diverted from Mono Lake, further endangering an already fragile ecosystem. A graduate student from Stanford University by the name of David Gaines took notice of the problem in 1974 when the lake had reduced by almost 69% of its 1941 surface area. 
In 1977, together with students from UC Davis and UC Santa Cruz, he published a report that awakened the public to the crisis. Gaines' efforts eventually led to a famous court battle in National Audubon Society versus Superior Court. In a landmark decision, the California Supreme Court had found that the state of California violated public trust doctrine when it issued diversion permits to the LADWP. The public trust doctrine dates back to Roman Emperor Justinian, when in 530 AD he declared, by the law of nature, these things are common to all mankind. The air, running water, the sea, and consequently the shores of the sea. So yes, the next time you take a stroll down the beach, you can thank a dead Roman emperor. As a result of this litigation, the California State Water Resources Control Board issued a protective order to save Mono Lake by maintaining a goal lake level of 6,392 feet above sea level through less water diversion. As of today, the lake is slightly under that goal due to challenges from recent droughts, but the protective order was an important step in preserving this important natural resource. Today, organizations like the Mono Lake Committee and its team of volunteers are committed to the protection and restoration of Mono Lake. Hey, thanks guys for tuning into this video. My hope is that it will challenge you to think about our collective role as humans to protect our natural resources. And no, this doesn't mean you have to be a crazy tree hugger or environmentalist fanatic. You've heard that ignorance is bliss, but awareness can go a long way in ensuring that our important natural resources aren't squandered by future urban development. This can take many forms, including holding our elected officials accountable rather than blindly accepting what they tell us at face value. Thanks for tuning in and remember to never stop exploring.